Hi, my name is Ashish and in this video we will see how is your content delivery network works. So let us go back to the official documentation from Microsoft to make our life easier by understanding what exactly and how it works in the most simplest form. Here it is, Microsoft has provided a beautiful simplest documentation so that you so that we all can understand it in a much easier way so let's say a user Alice this is the user Alice would send the request from here to here POPH servers request a file also called an asset by using a URL which is a specified domain name such as endpoint name dot zero dot net you will see how we define this part just read along it with me do not confuse yourself with these names we will understand in a much better way when we'll do the practical sessions this name can be an endpoint host name or a custom domain the dns routes the request to the best performing pop location which is usually the pop that is geographically closest to the user so rather than going and taking the long route by going into the origin of the file the file gets presented to the user by the edge servers which is also known as point of presence so now if no edge servers in the POP have the file in their cache the POP requests the file from the origin server so if the file is not present here is not the file is not here then the this would request the file from the origin server rather than the user going on to the origin server so the origin server can be an Azure web app Azure cloud service Azure storage account or any publicly accessible web server the origin server return the file to an edge server in the pop so the origin server if the file is not cached then the origin the edge server would look for the file on the origin server origin server would return the file to the edge server and then we will move on to the next step the edge server in the pop caches the file and returns the file to the original request which is the user the file remain cached on the edge server in the pop until the ttl specified by its http headers we as an admin can define the ttl which is by default is seven days additional users can then request the same file by using the same url that alice used and can also be directed to the same pop if the ttl for the file hasn't expired the pop edge servers returns the file directly from the cache and let's say the ETL has expired. So this edge server will go back again. And if the ETL specified is 14 days, it depends upon your organization, your process needs, whatever the amount of TTL you want to keep. So if, if that requires, and then if other users want to access the same file, if the file is cached, the ETL is not expired, they would get it directly and that this also would not have to go up again to the origin server this is how it works so now you know alice would go here if the file is not here on the edge server it would go here and it would then return the file here they would cache it now this will go the file to the Alice server. Other users would have to access the same file, would request the edge server rather than going here to the origin. And then the edge server, if the TTL is expired, would request the file again. If the TTL is not expired, they would serve the file back to the other user as well from the cache. So if you want to know further please do not forget to subscribe to this channel and i'll see you in the next video thank you bye bye